Welcome everyone. Thanks for taking time out of your day to, to join us on our webinar on Gamson Pinnell Classroom Guided Reading. Um, so just to give you a little bit of background on classroom uh, before we jump right into guided reading. Um, it is um, a high quality classroom based literacy instruction uh, for everyday literacy happening in the classroom and it's designed for pre-k through grade six and there are seven different instructional contexts so there's interactive read aloud you'll see the little tiles on the bottom of the screen right now interactive read aloud uh, reading mini lessons shared reading guided reading independent reading phonics spelling and word study and book clubs and so what we're going to do today is we're going to focus on guided reading and during our time together we're going to look a little bit at what is guided reading and then um, spend some time looking at what resources are part of the guided reading component in Fountas and Pinnell classroom. We'll explore guided reading and the literacy continuum and how those two resources work together. We'll also take a peek at a sample lesson. And during that time, Daniel will share a link with you where you can download uh, the sample lesson that I will be sharing, but also sample lessons from other grade levels. So of course, for our time today, I could only choose one grade level. So you're welcome to uh, search out the other grade levels that would be applicable to your, your current role. And then we'll, spend some time at the end uh, doing some questions and answers but as Daniel mentioned if you have any questions that pop up as we go through the webinar uh, please feel free to post them in in the chat all right so let's get started uh, and dig right into guided reading so guided reading is a small group instruction and it's really designed so that the teacher is providing that in the moment explicit instruction for students at where they're at in their reading and really moving them forward. Now, they are working with instructional level text during that time, so that's why there is some teacher support to scaffold the work that they're doing and the learning, so that there will be some challenge with the text, but they'll also be able to learn new things as a reader and have enough support from the teacher that they're able to um, efficiently make it through the text. Um, Students are reading the whole text, so you'll notice in the in guided reading in the Fountain Pinnell Classroom resources, the texts are shorter, and during the guided reading lesson, they'll be navigating through the whole text, and you'll see that as we walk through a sample lesson. And then the whole idea is, with when working with that small group, is that you are being really responsive to their needs as the learner. So again, we're listening into students individually as they read in that small group setting. We're providing some teaching points, some instruction for the student, again, to move them forward in their reading and their processing of text. So just to kind of give you a breakdown of what's included in the guided reading component, um, there are a few different pieces. And what you'll see, of course, first is that there are over 1300 titles and you can see the breakdown there by grade level so in the lower grades there's 200 titles per grade level and these are unique titles to Fountas and Pinnell classroom guided reading and they were created by obviously talented authors and illustrators but under the direction of Fountas and Pinnell so you'll notice when you look at these texts that they do match the text characteristics that Fountas and Pinnell have put together that align with their text level gradient and we'll talk a little bit more in detail in a few slides about that but you'll notice that they're highly engaging and when you look at some of the samples that are available on our website you'll be able to see the kinds of books that students will be interacting with and it's really about developing them as readers writers and also to develop their language skills and so within each title, you actually get six copies of each book. They are all in color. There is a lesson folder. You will get a sample, a sample of that in just a few minutes um, and be able to see what that looks like. So each title has its own lesson folder and that's actually the lesson card that goes with each title. It's available when you purchase it as print, but you also get an access code to the digital resources and so you can also um, access it digitally if, if you prefer that way. There is a recording form for every title that's part of Fountain Pinnell Classroom and you can access that again digitally on the online resources. When you purchase you get that access code. Um, <clears throat> 
and I think I've already mentioned, or no, maybe I didn't mention this part, but the collection guide. So for each Fountain Simonelle classroom grade level resource, there's a collection guide per grade level. And it has some great background information about guided reading in your classroom, walks you through um, an annotated lesson, and just some of those key features within guided reading. So that's included. And then a handful of other online resources. So as I mentioned, the PDF of the lesson recording form or digital, there's a video library so you can watch some guided reading lessons in action. And you also get a one-year free trial of the online data management system. And there you go, you can kind of just get a quick glance of what it actually looks like. There is just one small sample of some books. You'll see the lesson folders are there with the books and they come in those containers um, and holders so that you can organize them and store them up either in, in a classroom or in a, in a book room. These can be shared uh, um, among classroom teachers. So um, if you order a certain grade level, you may be sharing it amongst a few different classrooms. And again, those are conversations that you can have back at your school as to how you organize that and how you set that up. I just wanted to show you this quick visual to let you see um, the levels and how they are organized from kindergarten to grade six in guided reading. So what you'll notice, as I mentioned earlier, is there are 50 titles per text level. And you can see how they're dispersed on the screen there. So I'll just give you a moment to kind of take a peek at that. Again, they are original texts. There is about half of them per, um, per grade, about half of them are fiction and about half are nonfiction. They do have a global focus, and so there is content from different parts of the world. And the whole idea, too, is that we want students to gain those global perspectives and also build their background knowledge. As I mentioned before, they're very appealing. There's series books. Um, there's two-way text. So again, a variety of genres that are included. So lots of engaging titles for, for students to read and be supported as they make their way through guided reading lessons. All right, let's spend a few minutes kind of looking a little bit deeper at the continuum because the continuum is really the, the roadmap or the foundation for Founts and Pinnell Classroom. And I think it's important to kind of talk about how this works really well with guided reading as well as you'll see the other instructional contexts that are on your screen right now. But in particular for today's session, we're going to focus on guided reading. So of the eight continua within, within the literacy continuum, um, all of them except guided reading are organized by grade level. So all the other ones are organized by grade level. When you get to guided reading, it's actually organized and broken down by reading level A through Z. And <clears throat> the continuum is really at the center of everything we do from shared reading and uh, writing about reading and and of course guided reading and it provides us with descriptions about what proficient readers do and um, you know what they're describing them at those different levels and um, of course those are the goals that we're aiming for and we want to move forward uh, students in their learning as they approach um, and move up the levels so this is a great companion resource. If you have benchmark assessment at your school, you're probably familiar with the literacy continuum because it comes inside the benchmark assessment system um, box. You can also purchase it separately, but this is a great reference because you can dig into the literacy continuum and start to make some specific decisions based on the students that you're working with and based on the observations that you're making with those students. And that can really guide next steps in learning. Now you will see on the lesson folder that we explore today for um, guided reading that it does reference goals out of the literacy continuum. But the nice thing about actually having a continuum is that you can dig a little bit deeper to see what are some of the other goals that are at that text level. Because like I said, on the lesson folder, it's gonna give you a sampling and it you may have to look beyond that for some of the students you're working with to think about 
um, what would be most important for those learners because it's really about making those precise decisions uh, for those students that are sitting in front of you and with you as you navigate through the text. Oh, here on the screen is the text level gradient and you'll find this inside the literacy continuum. So I referred to this a little bit earlier and uh, many of you are probably familiar with this and it uses letter levels. And so these are in uh, intended really to provide general guidelines. So you may have different guidelines as you look at this text gradient. You may have come up with different guidelines within your school, school, school district and adjust them accordingly and, and that's fine. Um, but I just wanted to make reference of this so as you see this text level gradient or you're thinking about texts at different levels and the text characteristics and features, you just are able to think about this visual and how everything aligns. Now, also on here uh, on the screen now that just popped up is the 10 characteristics related to text difficulty. So when you actually look inside the guided reading section of the literacy continuum, what you'll notice is that they have very specific descriptions at each level around these 10 text characteristics. And so when you look at a particular level, it really breaks down those 10 characteristics of the types of language, um, behaviors, content, uh, text structure, illustrations, those kinds of things, and how they're specific to texts at those levels. And so it'll give you the characteristics. Now, again, this is just um, a general overview of texts at that particular level. So it's really important to keep in mind that, again, we can't, you know, individual texts may have different features in them, but this is that general overview. So I'm going to click onto the next slide here just so you can kind of get a sense of what it actually looks like inside a specific level within the literacy continuum. So here inside the literacy continuum, you'll see that it defines the types of uh, behaviors or, uh, that you may see at a particular level. And again, this is generally true of readers at level E. So the example we're looking at is, is in in that particular level is the type of reader they're describing and just kind of to keep in mind that again these are general expectations so just remember that obviously all readers and individuals are, are different but these are the types of things that we generally see with readers at a level E so this is laid out like this for every level from A to Z within the uh, literacy continuum. The nice thing about this is it really gets us thinking about rather than putting a, a label of a letter on a child because that's not the intention for those letters, it's about uh, it, us teachers using it as a tool to make informed decisions about texts we select or how to support those readers. So instead of thinking of them as a certain level, it's a great way to start thinking about them of the, around these different behaviors and characteristics that readers at level E may exhibit. I mean, this is what we're, our goals are. This is what we're aiming for. And so these are, these gives us, this gives us some characteristics to describe a reader at that level and what we might notice. The other thing that it does is, so we've talked about the 10 text characteristics. Now I just have a sample screenshot of um, six text characteristics. I don't have the other four shown on here, but what you'll notice is now it's talking about those 10 characteristics specifically around level E text. So what are some genres that um, might be apparent around level E? What are some forms, some text structure in particular to the content or the language and literary features? What might we notice in text that are at a level E? Any questions about this? And if you do, please just type them in the chat. So within the literacy continuum, as you flip the next page in, you'll notice that um, it's broken down into the system of strategic actions and thinking within beyond and about the text. And you'll see this evident in the lesson that we walk through, how it connects it back to the literacy continuum. So that's why I want to take a little bit of 
time just to make you familiar with how the continuum set up because it works as a companion resource with the guided reading resources. So within here, um, each level A through Z is um, set up so that it's broken down into thinking within the text, thinking beyond the text, and thinking about the text. And what you'll see here is it, it, it's those characteristics that are part of the system of strategic actions that we want students to have a lot of proficiency in as they work their way through text. So these are some of the goals or characteristics, behaviors and understandings that we want to notice, teach and support for students who are working at a particular level. And you'll notice here that anything that's thinking within the text, anywhere in the continuum, is always shown by a blue circle or a blue bullet. Anything that is identified as thinking beyond the text is always in green and it has a diamond bullet in front of it. And then anything that is um, thinking about the text is with purple. So if we go back to that system of strategic actions, you'll see that anything um, that has to do with critiquing and analyzing those behaviors to notice, teach, and support are going to be referenced in purple with a purple square. Now, it's important to think about that all students are going to engage in this system of strategic actions, readers at all levels, but it's going to look different at each of the levels. And so that's why the Literacy Continuum is an important companion resource so that we can start to think about how do students at level B think about the text and engage in those system of strategic actions at that level. And then what about students who are reading more complex texts at level M? What does thinking about the text look like at that level? So it really breaks it down for us so we can get a good sense of how we can be precise and intentional in our teaching and move those students forward in their learning and the other thing that it does is it provides that consistent language among teachers among classrooms among schools school districts so we're all teaching with intention and purpose but also using that consistent um, vocabulary with students as we talk about text and write about text and engage in different texts. So that's the nice thing. It builds that coherence among classrooms. And ultimately, that's at the benefit for, for the students. All right. So that gives you a little bit of background on the continuum. So if you haven't looked at that resource, I encourage you to um, take a peek at it. There's some sample chapters online that you can download um, through our website. You can request a, a digital sampler and look at it that way. But you can also, if you have benchmark assessment in your school and in your building, you can take it out of the box there and explore it a little bit further. So before we jump into the sample lesson, um, I just wanted to highlight this visual because you'll see at the top here that interactive read aloud is the foundation um, on which you know everything's built it's a there's a high level of teacher support and interactive read aloud we're you know modeling for students how they engage with those system of strategic actions and the whole idea is that we want to build their shared literacy knowledge and so as we do that um, we also work in we do those things whole group and you'll see the other things on there like reading mini lessons and shared reading and so on but we also have opportunities to work with students in small group settings and that's where guided reading comes in so as I mentioned at the top of the webinar um, that's our opportunity to work be responsive in the moment work with those small groups of students be really intentional and make those moment-to-moment -moment decisions that's really going to guide them through those texts at their instructional level and in order to do that, we obviously need students working independently so that we've got some time to pull those small group of students. So you'll see on the slide here that during guided reading, students are often engaged in independent work. And there could be, uh, could be literacy centers. It could be a workshop model that you have set up in your classroom. And again, that gives us the time where we can pull those small groups and work um, together with them on instructional level texts. There is also, if you're looking for more information um, about the management piece of that independent work, I'll share a resource at the end with you 
that Founders and Pinnell have out that really does a great job of talking about the design of guided reading and setting up guided reading in your classroom. So stay tuned for that and I'll, I'll share that with you towards the end of our webinar together. Um, one of the things you'll also notice on the slide before I click off of it and onto our sample lesson is that you'll see an orange dot referenced in many of the instructional contexts. This is just um, to let you know that these are instructional contexts where word study is taking place as well. So in the guided reading portion, you'll notice in the continuum as well as on the lesson folders, there are there is some... Um, ideas that you can use to implement some word study in that last couple of minutes during your guided reading time together. And you'll get to see a sample of what that looks like as we move through the lesson together. So let's dive in and take a look at what that lesson folder actually looks like. Um, for today's webinar, I've actually pulled a grade four lesson. And on here, on the screen, I know you can't read this part. I, I just put this on here so I could highlight some of the key components that are in each of the lessons that are available in the lesson folders. Daniel's going to post a link for you in the chat, and that will get you to uh, the samplers for not only grade four, but also for the other grades that you can take a peek at. So that will be helpful for you to see that. But I'm going to highlight some of the key features. So um, obviously, you'll see at the start there, are, sorry, at the top of the page, just uh, below the grade four uh, signage there, there's obviously the materials that you're going to need. And so obviously, one of them is the book. If there's any online resources, it's referenced there. As I mentioned, the recording forms, the reading records for each title are on the online resources. And then it's going to reference the book. It's going to give you the level, the author, the illustrator, the genre. If it's in a series, it will let you know that. Um, and then, of course, it's always got a thumbnail of what the book looks like. From there, so we're actually today going to look at DJ Focus. That's going to be the book that uh, is part of this lesson that we're going to explore. And I'll show you some sample pages of just what that looks like. Um, so in here, you'll see... This is DJ Focus, and uh, inside this lesson, this is about a boy um, from Sierra Leone in West Africa, and he is kind of talks about himself as it's a biography, and he talks about himself as an as an engineer. Uh, he's always into looking and discovering new and making new things, and so within this book, that's exactly what he does. Uh, he sets up uh, a radio station. And uh, you'll see some of the text features that are part of this book. So you'll notice that. I'm just going to click through some of these slides fairly quickly. Again, this is a grade four level T text. So that just gives you an idea of some of the pages. I don't have all of them included in there, but it just gives you a sense of the book. Now, inside of this book, there's the goals linked to the continuum. So the whole idea here is that coherence connection. Again, we want to, you know, pull some of those goals that would align with this text in particular and select some goals and you're going to think about from these goals what might be important ones to match the students that you're working with and what might be appropriate. So there's just a sampling of them there. Again you can always go back into literacy continuum and explore the other goals that are at that level. The other thing that's on here is it provides the analysis of the book characteristics. So in here, uh, it'll give you a little summary there too. It'll say how the book works. So it, it tells you it's a biography of Kelvin Doe. And um, through this, he overcomes obstacles, as I mentioned earlier, to create his own radio station and broadcast it in his community in Sierra Leone. Now you'll see, because this is a level T text, it breaks it down into those 10 text characteristics that are specific to this book. So in the continuum, it'll talk about characteristics that are uh, in general to level T texts, but for each book, they've actually done the analysis of the book characteristics. So it's a really great way to explore what's on there and see and think about what characteristics might be new for the students you're working with, what 
uh, characteristics may pose a challenge for some of the students that you're working with. So it's a great overview to provide that information because of course that's going to guide some of the support you provide to the students and the instruction that you provide so that they're able to read this book with proficiency. So after you know, you've familiarized yourself with the goals and the text characteristics, then it jumps right into the lesson and introducing the text. So in this sec section of the lesson, um, there is uh, many suggestions of how you may introduce the text and engage readers in the text. You'll also notice that some of them have uh, a circle bullet that that's just to make you aware that there are those are opportunities for students to respond and be part of that text introduction. So the whole idea here is we want to uh, talk with students and get them thinking about the types of or the, or the text that they're about to read and engage them in that text. So again, many suggestions here. You as the teacher can choose what you think is going to be most appropriate for the group that you're working with at that time. All right, the next part then is that we're gonna get the students actually reading the text. And so during this point, uh, we're gonna be listening in and prompting and interacting with the students as they read. And you may lean in closer to one student and then provide some possible, um, or sorry, there's some suggestions there of possible things that you're gonna you know, look for or listen for as the student's reading and you may prompt them. Um, there is an icon on the left there of the prompting guide and I'll get to that in just a minute, but it's referenced on many of the pages and in the mar margins throughout each lesson. The other thing that you'll notice, and I know you can't read this, so I'm gonna zoom in on it for you, is that there is supports built in for English learners. And the, these supports are built in in various parts throughout the lesson so that we can support English learners in processing text and uh, scaffolding instructions so that, again, they're able to read this text with proficiency. And you're going to see these change. They're book specific and they're going to change and there's going to be different types of supports built in as you navigate through the lesson. So here on your screen, you'll see as you introduce the text, there's supports built in. And then as the students are reading, there's different supports built in. All right, on to the next part. All right, so as the students uh, finish up their reading, you're gonna discuss and revisit the text. And so during that time, what you'll notice here is it is color coded and broken down to that system of strategic actions. So again, going back to that system of strategic actions wheel that, we, that I referenced earlier, this is um, some actions that readers might employ while they're um, actually processing and making their way through the text. So here's some things that you can think about and, you know, maybe prompt students for if you, as text, if you don't see these things evident. So it gives you lots of suggestions there. Again, what you'll notice here is um, we want to obviously encourage discussion, but you'll notice that th these supports are book specific. So these ones here are to do with the actual book that the lesson folder is for. So that's nice because again, we have that information right at our fingertips and it really helps us in guiding the discussion around the book as we revisit it with students and, and discuss what they, they learned and what they read about and what they noticed inside of that book. So this is a chance for the students to share their thinking. The other thing that's also listed here is the messages. So again, we want students to um, get the sense of the main message or the big idea. So that's always highlighted there for you, the teacher, again, specific to the book that you're, um, that's for that lesson. And then the other thing it does is it shares some teaching points. So this gives you an opportunity to respond to individual students after the reading based on what you're noticing. So again, these are suggestions. You're gonna listen in um, and observe the students. And then you may use some of these teaching points to further support them in their thinking about the text.
And then the prompting guide, which I referenced earlier, um, is always uh, uh, referenced inside the, in the margin of the text, the, the lesson folder. And oftentimes it'll reference prompting guide one and two. And so you can, if you have leveled literacy intervention in your school, you likely have these resources found in box one of leveled literacy intervention. You may have purchased them separately, but in here there's facilitative language provided so that we can teach, prompt, or reinforce um, behaviors and understandings for students. So again, it provides that facilitative language. So if we're trying to get students to monitor their reading or for solving, um, uh, words, we can explore the language that is part of our the prompting guide to either teach for, prompt for, or reinforce those reading behaviors. And then from there, um, on the next part of the lesson, so the fourth page and the final page of the lesson, uh, there's word work. So remember I talked to you earlier that within the literacy continuum, they reference word work principles that um, would be appropriate at the different levels of text. Well, now they have built in for this particular lesson um, a few minutes where you can spend some time doing a word work lesson. So here, uh, the students are looking at multisyllable words. There's always a visual provided so that you can see what the lesson could look like or how it could unfold in, in some of the responses from students. So. That's nice because you've got that image always supporting you there. Um, I don't think I have it zoomed in on this part, but you'll notice in the margin in really small print um, on the slide that there, again, there's supports for English language learners as you navigate through this portion of the lesson. And then the next part is the writing about reading. Now, this is an optional piece and you can choose you may do this with some books you may not do it with all of the books and that's okay too but this gives you that option um, in case you want students to write about the text that they read and share their thinking again uh, there's a visual of what that could look like and what responses could be and here these students in grade four they're actually doing some shared writing in a two column chart And then the final piece on there is the assessment. And so this again is linked to goals and literacy continuum and it references uh, or is linked to the first page of the lesson folder and the goals that are listed on there, which I showed you right at the beginning of the sample lesson. And then you can always download the reading record and use that to assess students, um, you know, possibly the following day. You may choose one student to assess and do a quick check-in just to see how they're doing with that level of text. And again, to use that information to guide and inform your teaching with those students or with that student. Here's a sample of what the reading record form looks like. Um, I didn't include all of the pages, but you'll get a sense of the way it's laid out, if you're familiar with benchmark assessment or level literacy intervention, these forms will look familiar to you. All right, so that has uh, given you a, a hopefully a good sense of what the lessons looks, look like inside of the guided reading instructional context. I just wanted to put this visual up on here before we kind of start to wrap things up, just to kind of get you thinking about um, going back to that level of support that we're providing inside of guided reading. So obviously in shared reading, there's a high level of teacher support. And inside guided reading, there's a lower level than shared reading, but still a moderate amount of support provided so that students can process that text individually. So obviously in shared reading, we're, we're doing stuff more as a whole group. In guided reading, they are reading that text individually with that teacher support. So again, it's gonna be at their instructional level. So it's gonna provide a bit of a challenge for them. And of course, what we wanna do is make sure that everything that we're, we're doing and providing that support with ultimately is leading to independent reading and processing texts uh, proficiently with minimal support inside of independent reading. So those skills and those behaviors and understandings that we're supporting inside of shared reading and inside of guided reading, students are now applying to their independent reading. If uh, this figure as well as that resource I talked about before, so this image um, 
comes from the guided reading resource uh, guided it's called guided reading responsive teaching across the grades so this resource is really foundational and uncovers the power and purpose of guided reading it's got a lot of great information in it and really talks about uh, responsive teaching as well and building that community of learners in our classroom as well as how to um, you know create a sense of independence when you're setting up uh, individual literacy time so that you can pull small groups of students it's got a couple chapters for the primary grades and a or a, one chapter for the primary grades and a chapter um, on what that might look like with um, intermediate and middle school students so definitely lots of great information inside that resource that uh, you may want to take a further look at and again you can explore that on our website um, other than that if there's any questions uh, you can post them in the chat I think our time together is almost over, um, but it does leave a few minutes for questions. As you're thinking about questions that you have, um, I do want to highlight some of the um, other uh, instructional context webinars that we're offering. So there is a repeat of this one um, on March 25th, um, but we'll also be exploring shared reading in the next few weeks, as well as phonics, spelling, and word study, and in interactive read aloud so if you register for any of those um, and and you can't make it last minute that's okay too because you will still receive the recording of the webinar that you can revisit later if you do want to request a hard copy sampler uh, you can get a hold of your sales rep and i'll put their contact info up in just a minute you can also book an appointment and we would be happy to have someone come visit your school and share some of the instructional context or if there's a particular one that you're looking at inside found symphonel classroom they would be happy to bring some samples and show you what that looks like we do have some early adopter uh, options available um, but I do encourage you uh, if you haven't already done so to join the found Pinel literacy community it's free you can just go to found there's lots of great webinars on there daily lit bits study guides if you're uh, consultant leading uh, teachers and and staff through uh, the continuum there's lots of support on there for uh, things that you might do to lead that so Please, if you haven't already done so, think about signing up for the Fountain Pinnell Literacy Community. I have put uh, the Pearson website on there, so pearsoncanada.ca slash fpc, which has all of the information around Fountain Pinnell Classroom on our website, so please feel free to visit that. And if you do want to contact your sales rep in your area, their contact information is up on the screen now. If you work at the district level as a consultant or an, another position at the district level, um, you can reach out to the sales rep that's in your area on this screen and they'll connect you to the account executive in your territory. And again, they would be happy to connect with you or come meet with you and bring you some samples of Fountain Pinnell Classroom. If there are no questions, uh, Thanks again for your time. Hopefully you were able to get a deeper understanding of the instructional context of guided reading. Enjoy your evening. And I think that's it for now. So I'll mute my microphone and just wait to see if we have any questions pop up.